This one's a really, um, it's a good one and a really easy one. Okay, so we've got, um, we've got Photoshop. Wow. And, uh, and usually what I like to do is just uh, get an image in black and white. So if I, uh, where are we? So with this, I'll grab, I'll grab anything. Actually, I'll grab another image. Oh, no, hang on. I'll just, I'll do it. I'll do it with this one. So all I'm doing is I'm grabbing an image and I just want to make it um, black and white. So the way I do it is I go into the channels. I make a new channel and I'm just going to um, paste it, except I copied the wrong, the wrong thing. Okay. Cool. So I've got this and the, the brushes are actually, they can have um, grayscale in them. I like them when they're closer to being a bit black and white. So all I'm trying to do is just get a black and white, um, a black and white image. So I'm going to do um, a pretty uh, grotesque uh, brush. But this is the um, this is the process. And I'm just um, blocking this out just so it's a, just so it's a bit cleaner. But essentially all you do is you get a selection tool and I drag around what I want to turn into a brush. Yeah. As soon as I've got that, I can go um, Define brush, give it a name if I want, and that's automatically got it already. I'll just select that. The thing that the thing that's funny with this is that if I paint, it does this weird kind of spacey, you know, computer generated um, line. So what I do is I go into the um, the folder here that lets you um, change the brush settings. And I just uh, shape dynamics. I changed the, the jitter and the angle. You can see it happening down here with the, um, with the oh. preview. So I'm try all I'm trying to do is mess with these things so that I don't get a uniform line. Something that you know, tries to mess with it and make it look more um, like it's not controlled by the computer, more, more organic. The main, the main thing here is changing the jitter and the angle. The others I'm just playing with now to see what happens. And the scattering, how much it splits it apart. So I just do it a little bit to loosen it. You can change the um, count for the density. Let's see how it looks. Let's change the density a bit more. I'm just going to um, get rid of that so we can see it. So um, even that, it's it's doing a reasonable job of of making a. Um, uh, somewhat of an organic shape, even though, though it's the most ridiculous of images to to use. So I just all I do is get it in um, black and white. That channel I don't need it anymore. It's kind of like I can still um, paint with that brush. Oops. Yeah, I'll see if um, uh, if I just drag around an image here. I haven't I haven't tried this to be honest. I always work in black and white, but if I go to find brush, I can just 
Yeah, okay. Even though it's a color image and I've selected around it, it's doing exactly the um, exactly the same thing. Okay. You know, if I um, have that color, it's just it's just a bit crude because I haven't gone in and um, and played with it at all. But I can go back in here and change all of this stuff again. No, and it's just because I didn't go to the bother of of cleaning out the the background and doing all of that sort of stuff. I just did a hard edge around it and that's what it selected. But it automatically turns it into to black and white. But even that, you know, you can end up with some kind of uh, interesting, you know, interesting results. I can clip that, so now my color. So the, the, I'll get rid of the mask, so I can have all of that color. So now that's clipped onto the pattern that I've just made. And I can click on this image and say, okay, what about if I go through these blending modes and see if something starts to look interesting. You know, and I might go, all right, I'm gonna have it on multiply. I can change the opacity. And then if we want to get uh, clever, I can say, here's this mask for clear. So if I hold down, um, for me it's command, for you it'll be control. And I should get a hand with a little square that pops up under it. If I click on that and let go, I've got the actual selection for that mask and then I can come up to the color, click the mask and it'll turn the selection into a mask. Oh shit, sorry. Um, that did it for the color. I actually want to add the mask though to this image because what I want is I only want it to be over that selection and not over the background. So click it. I'll have my selection, mask, and it controls it. If I don't want it over here, but I want it over the background, I can click on that mask and go image, adjust, invert, and it just gives me the opposite. And this is this is what I mean by um, uh, uh, trying, you know, complicating it, um, uh, complicating it up a bit. You know, we can. Um, double click on that color and then you have these uh, blending blending options it's a bit of a big menu and so with the color actually I want to work with the image underneath the lightest areas of the um, face oh, okay it's um it's the color is letting the black come through. If I click on um, this, double click, we'll see now that it should, yeah, it starts to affect. So basically what it's doing is it's saying the lightest areas of the face start to show through. The darkest areas, which will be the hair and everything, start to show through. So, not a terribly um, uh, good result from this image, but you know, it's just another layer that we can kind of start to add on it. Okay. So yeah, the, br the brush is a, a, a simple but a powerful tool. Yep, no, it's